It is three past the hour, so we will get started. Uh, it's the 8th of May. G'day, how are you going? I hope you are doing well wherever you are joining us from. Um, I should also say this is the Qbert community. Uh, again, welcome. Um, so uh, we've got a couple of things on our uh, agenda at the moment. Uh, if you are, are new and you would like to introduce yourself, uh, drop something in chat. Um, we'll go through our regular um, things. And then if you've got something, if you'd like to introduce yourself, um, I will see it in chat and I'll come back and uh, give you a little while to say, hey, it's me. Here's what I'm doing. Um, cool. So without any further ado, let's have a quick look at our 1.3 schedule. as it slowly loads. It is May. We've got nothing. Um, good news was released, I think, uh, I think two weeks ago, Brian is on the line. Uh, did you write that 130 test line? Brian is not on the line. Does anyone know if he created that test line? All righty. Um, as usual, I'll point out that the feature freeze for 1.3 is the 12th of June. And then uh, three weeks later, on the 3rd of July, we'll have our 1.3 release. That is all for that. I'm going to her again. Mm -hmm. All right, here we go. Um, the KubeCon Cloud Native Con. Uh, China CFP has closed. However, uh, you've still got time for Qbert Summit. I'll talk a little bit more about that as I tend to do in just a minute. Um, also, if you are likely to be in the United States, um, when is that? November? Then Qubit Cloud and Qubit North America 2024. Its CFP is still open. It's open for a month. It closes on June 9th. Uh, so the links are in there. Um, also, we do have some uh, DevConf talks. I had a look through the schedule this morning. I have not yet added some here, but if we are going to get DevConf, there will be, I think, five or five to nine Kubernetes people there. Um, and we do have a booth. So um, if you're going to be there, we don't know who you are, then we would love to see you there. Back to Abstin. I see Abid um, on the crowd cloud is new here. Um, did, did you manage to fix your audio issues and you want to say a quick hello? I'll take this note. I think some people, I don't know if it's a new Zoom thing. Um, I think it's a Zoom where you have to go to the top right of the screen. There's an additional unmute if you haven't done that before. I think someone uh, can confirm or deny that. Otherwise, uh, welcome. Um, we, uh, yeah. If you've got anything that you'd like to bring up, you're welcome to put it into uh, the agenda or the open floor. Although if you haven't ordered the process, it has become slightly harder. Um, all righty. We have a couple of things on our agenda today, so we will get to them now. Ed, I presume the first one is yours. Is that here? Good. 
have I stopped being able to hear things or can no one else hear anything? I can hear it. I can hear it. Okay, excellent. Is it you, you can't hear? I, I can hear you, Andrew. I, I can hear you, Andrew. You can? Okay, cool. uh, can, but can anyone hear Ed? I presume Ed's talking because his mic's off, uh, his mute's off. Um, I don't. His... I don't. Okay. Yeah, I'm not hearing him either. Um, I'm not hearing him either. It's, yeah, it's not me. Um, or if uh, the slope binding deprecation, I presume that's Ed's point here. Um, we'll presume maybe that Ed's having difficulty with his audio. I can see the icon moving. We still can't hear you. Uh, you might be hard muted. Well, we might move on to the next uh, item then, Ed, if you want to um, try and troubleshoot your audio, which will be play. Yeah. yeah. Uh, so right, I, I just hear. wanted to put this out there that SIG API um, is working to add uh, a set of fuzzer tests, which will help uh, catch uh, backward compatible, incompatible changes during API reviews. Um, anyone who is interested in um, learning more about this work, um, we will be going through this in the next week's uh, SIG API call, uh, which is in on Wednesday, 9, 9 a.m. Uh, EST. So anyone who is interested in this, uh, please, uh, you know, either look at this PR or join that SIG API call to discuss more. In 10 seconds or less, could you explain what kind of API calls we're now trying to avoid? I mean, I have a good idea of what that means, but can we, can we define that? Uh, I'm sorry, can you repeat your question? You said that we're trying to make or avoid uh, backwards and compatible API changes. Uh, could you describe what kind of changes we're concerned about? Yeah, so any API change that happens to a V1 uh, object, right? For example, virtual machine instance, it's a V1 API. Any change you make to that, for example, adding a field, that could be could or could not be backward incompatible depending on what kind of change that is. Currently, we don't have any automated testing to catch that. This effort follows Kubernetes uh, uh, fuzzer testing method where we persist a bunch of YAML and encode and decode to co-structs from that YAML. And that is a way of saying that, okay, if I can encode and decode from a YAML on disk, I can use the same API structs to encode from API server and decode from API server. Um, so that's a very brief overview of what this um, test is doing. We can go in much more detail during the SIG API call. Thank you. Thank you, Ole. And yeah, just to also just point out that the SIG API call is not normally on a Wednesday, but next week it will be. Uh, normally it's at a Tuesday at the same time as it is. It will be next week. Um, I feel time that is. It's what, like 2 p.m. UTC? It's in the calendar. Um, yeah, if you're ever trying to learn when a, when a keyword meeting is, don't listen to me. It's always better to go to the calendar because it will um, uh, keep the times relevant to your time zone. All right. Ed. Yeah, how about now? Does it work? Hey, there we go. Yeah, I can hear you. Take it away. Okay, so the it's uh, it's about the slip uh, network binding uh, that we wanted to deprecate. I sent a few. I think it's a, it's about a year that we are sending uh, 
messages through the through the mailing list and um, and we did some work about it and we and recently I sent a reminder if anyone has feedback about it they have concerns uh, if you are using it by mistake I'm assuming no one really uses it but uh, we want to deprecate it and we want to get it in before uh, 1.3 so, uh, release so please it's like I think it I hope it will be the last week so if anyone wants to add some feedback please do it now that's it or if someone has concerns they can do it publicly on the, on the PR or send me a message to everyone thank you thank you and if I recall correctly, you had an email thread about this as well, right? Yes, I think uh, even the beginning of this week, I sent it again, like another reminder. Yeah. Uh, and awesome. if you want a quick, uh, a quick summary is that the existing, if anyone was using Slurp in the past and the, their VM is still running, it will keep on running. That's that's we will keep it uh, available. But once they are stopping it and will start it again in a new version, or they will try to migrate it to a new to a new version, then uh, then it will stop working, and they will have to to do the workaround that is suggested there. Like they can either use Slurp through a plugin, or they can use something something as the alternative, which is masquerade binding or past binding, stuff like that. But we are recommending not to continue working with Slurp. No one is using it anymore. Paul went out for Slurp. All right. I'll move now to the open floor. Um, so. This is relatively important because it starts next week. Uh, as of next week, I'll be putting the passcode required onto this meeting. Um, this is the same uh, password, 77777. Uh, that's five sevens, um, which is the same as all the Kubernetes meetings, and I think as well the CNCF meetings. And so it should be relatively familiar to a lot of you, um, if not all of you. Um, also, uh, I. The last couple of times I've been setting up this meeting, it's made me uh, really sad that our little lightning toss slash volunteer request form at the top here, I'll just scroll up. Uh, this is still empty. Uh, it breaks my heart that no one wants to talk about uh, either what they're working on, what they've just completed working on, um, or have requests to learn about other things that are happening in the Kubernetes community. Um, and if it does, remain entirely empty for too much longer, I might just have to start throwing in random topics in there that I would like to hear about. Um, so yeah, please, you don't have to talk for very long. Uh, it's just a, yeah, a short little thing saying, hey, this is, uh, this is my, little, my little contribution uh, to the community. Uh, Kubert Summit 2024, the CFP does close on the 20th of May, which is what 12 days um i've got a website link and a tweet there to share and repost if you're on mastodon or linkedin we do not have a presence there so if you'd like to um, share the cfp details there that would be um very much appreciated this is also the first year that we're running sponsorship opportunities uh, to help us um, pay for the event um i think i can now say that uh, both red hat and susa uh have stepped up as paid responses. Um, I've got the link there if anyone that will remain open, I think, until the start of June. Um, it's very cheap. Uh, so, yeah, if, if you'd like to um, support the community for this particular event and also get your brand in front of um, you know, the largest collection of Qvert people uh, for the entire year, then um, yeah, um, please consider sponsoring the event. All right, Jan, or is it Jan? Uh, Jan. 
So the first one. So uh, yeah, I just wanted to ask if it uh, would be okay with you that uh, we would introduce ourselves. So all the people working currently on S390X enablement on Kubevert, since otherwise we are like eight people and you maybe know, I think Cheryl and me. So that way, if some other random people start contacting you, you at least know who to blame for that interruption. But since that might be a bit more than just a short topic, I wanted to ask if we can get like a 10 minute slot or so in two weeks. Absolutely. Um, yeah, and uh, perhaps you'd like to add that to that, um, my, my little uh, matrix of sadness uh, at the top for a lightning talk. I can do that. That'd be awesome. Um, that way, I'll when we get to the twenty second, I will see it. And I'll add you to the agenda. Uh, you're also welcome to add yourself there. But thank you very much for um, yeah for telegraphing that ahead. Uh, that is extremely appreciated. Um, on that note, I wasn't going to bring it up. Mailing this stuff. Um, did you see uh, a thread on our mailing list? I think they've been proposed it. Uh, this one, I didn't see the system. Yeah, I saw that. I haven't really read through it. Okay. Because um, I think this will apply to your team. Yeah. Awesome. I don't know if I always say this, but apparently there's still a radio alert. Um, I've also sort of prepared an English review, but never paste it. And I will we'll fix that later. We have one PR that needed attention. Let's have a quick check to see if no one's jumped on it. Okay. I'm Christy Daxby, I remember from, I think, roughly when I started on this project a couple of years ago. Um, so, adding a CPU model structure to the domain. No release note. Let's have a quick look. Okay, nice and small. Sue, I think I heard your voice earlier. Where's you going? Hello, I admit to being distracted. Say, What's up? I should say, <laughs> I should say, I know I heard your voice earlier. Um, <laughs> this is our one PR awaiting attention. I do see that you are. Um, what can I leave in this your capable hands? Uh, I just yes. have a quick, sorry, I just have a quick look to the PR, but I, I'm just wondering how we are supposed to use the model because it's just adding struct, but how those struct are populated is, I don't know, I think there are still missing a part. Oh no, okay, there is the, Okay, that I get in from the VMI. Well, I mean, it, yeah, we'll take it offline, but at a glance, I'm confused as to why this is needed. We already have a CPU yeah. model associated with the VMI. Maybe we were not parsing all the, all the structures, but it's a, yeah, it's a little bit weird. I, I don't know. So you you asked a, a short yes no question and got a very verbose answer. Yes, we'll take care of it. <laughs> yeah. Awesome. Thank you. Get back here. And our um, poorly formatted mailing list review 
Uh, so this is mostly just highlighting a few things that I saw, um, just to make sure that everyone saw it. This, I think, is from yesterday, saying that there's a problem with our VGPU, VGPU testing. Um, as he says, yep, yeah, as you need it. I guess I'll let Brian know. I presume this is a flip this has yet resolved. And maybe that's why Brian's not meeting today. Um, yep, so just FYI. This one I think is from a couple of weeks ago. This one's from Daniel. Um, this has a little, uh, if you'd like to pitch in, attached to it. Basically, start adding documentation to uh, the Qubit levels that we have, um, which are privileges, kind of, I guess, domain knowledge. And yes, if you, as he says, sadly, the documentation for many labels is missing. Let's work on fixing that. Um, so yeah, if you've got a couple of minutes between things, or you're waiting for a build, or you finish the job before lunch, you're like, you know what? I feel like writing a short one or two sentences um, uh, about a specific label that I know all about in our GitHub to help other people, um, then please do. And that's in the project info repo. And he's got an example there as well. This, I think, is a request for support. That's up to the cracks. They've got the manifest, they've got their log. More log. It's going to be open. Yeah, so is there someone Stu? <laughs> who might have some insight in this one? It's that um, the VM was on an AMD processor selection, but not on the Intel. Could you ask Barack more to hide a look at that? I sure can. Let me just make a quick note. All right. Last one, I think again, this is another FYI from Daniel Hill, if memory serves. That's for Brian. After all the chairs, um, yeah, I put it on the light. Right. And I'll take there. And that is our mailing list review. Five bugs to have a look through. I'm wondering why these lists are so long. It's because we didn't have a meeting last week, and so about two weeks of that. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. The use of components with vulnerabilities in the Qubit. Vulnerability uh, says many components are still being used in this project. I have to report this issue to you so you can fix and improve it accordingly. Uh, excellent. Uh, 
Uh, so you, uh, not that I'm picking on you, but I am just gonna tag you in this um, because this follows on from some of the things we've been talking about uh, regarding our graduation. Thank you. No, thank you. Uh, next one. Oh, this is epic. That is quite the bug description. Uh, CDI import used to create a custom template VM, which was successful, and then cloned to create a VM. Seems to be an I want to use script and using RAM. Okay, so it's a problem with the uh, console. Ah, it doesn't have an IP after a clone VM. Um, gut take, is this a networking issue, do you think? I have no idea. It's like looks like I need to read a lot in order to understand. <laughs> <laughs> it's a, it starts with ICCDI, ICCDI at the beginning, so I can say it's a storage. That's it. <laughs> I don't know really. Yeah, maybe make um, sure what, maybe make sure he like why he mentions the import so much and then goes on to say that there's a networking issue. Like he, I agree, he stresses CDI for some reason. Um, in the old days, definitely threw me off. I'm not to get tricks these days. Um, I think you sh it could just put be it, that they're adding information. No, you can just take all the text and put it in JetGPT, ask him, uh, what's the problem? <laughs> 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 I don't know. I, I can try to read, like but... Ed wants to take his... <laughs> Can you do CC chat GPT and then get a response? <laughs> Te tempted right um, to ask chat GPT, but uh, I'll try and get to see it. Um, Ed, you're welcome to do that as you wish. No problem. Thank you. So, if you use GitHub Copilot, would Copilot is helpful at man? And, um, running through bugs, or is it really just for create like uh, working on the code for WP has? Andrew, I, uh, I don't know if anyone, if it's only me, but when you are talking, it, it looks like your CPU is uh, is killing your voice. Is it only me, or no? It's uh, for me as well. Ah, that's a shame. It's okay. Uh, maybe um, you, should, you can check if you have like 100% uh, CPU or something like that. It, because it happens to me when I do the mistake of uh, doing make and then starting a, uh, a meetup or a Zoom, then it's like that. Yeah, 230%. And you know what? Uh, I did actually have a couple of things running. 
So let me know if that helps anything. Yeah, for now it sounds better. Okay. Uh, all right. So note to self: in the future, I have to uh, kill my preview deployments. Um, I was just asking if anyone has familiarity with GitHub Code. You mentioned ChatGPT for that last bug. Would GitHub Copilot um, be at all helpful for? Is it all helpful for bugs? I know nothing about it. Um, I do know that the CNCF is offering some uh, projects um, a Copilot license, I guess. Um, or is it just for writing code? Um, Mostly for it's for writing code. Writing code. Okay. Thank you. Oh, I can see my CPU going down. All right. Let's have a look at this bug. Base version, patch, delete, create a VM. Okay, Kubelet operator webhook. I have no idea who works on that. Sorry, isn't the minimum uh, supported version for Kubernetes for uh, virtual 1.2 uh, only 1.27? Because I think uh, he's using a non supported version of Kubernetes. Maybe I'm wrong. Please chime in. No, I, I, think, I think you're absolutely right. It'll be three versions, so 29, 28, 27. That's a good catch. Um, I'll leave that up and come back to. Actually, just in case they aren't, can I CC you under that, Federico? Yeah, sure. But it's F O S S. F O S S. The second one, yeah. Thank you. By the way, this uh, this this was raised in another incident that I I was involved in, and I wanted to ask maybe someone here knows what is what we are supposed to do in this case. Like, for example, we are supporting now one point two, one point one, and one point zero, right? In our our COVID versions. Right? It's like three versions back, including the Correct. current one. But but the matri the ma the Kubernetes version is usually already end of uh, end of life in, in the older ones. So what happens to that? Like how can we support it on a end of life version of Kubernetes? If this ever loads, this might be helpful. To our releases. We go to releases, now support matrix. Yeah, so all of the end of life ones that you see here. How can we, yep. if someone is opening a ticket with that setup, how can we support it? It's, that's what I'm not sure about. Is it like a best effort or how? how exactly, exactly. It? The, my understanding, um, and I want everyone to step in and correct me, uh, is that basically the, the Qubit community as a whole um, says that we will support these versions. So if you if you have an issue with this version of Kubert, which responds to this version of Kubernetes, and it has a tick in the, in the box, um, which is the last three versions, which now that we're into the, the um, hallowed lands of post 1.0, um, it maps really neatly. 
then we will help you to the best of our abilities. Anything past that is really kind of like a volunteer effort um, that someone from the community might take, but it's not really kind of expected. Does that answer the question? Yeah, okay. By the way, I think 127 may be also now end of life. I'm not, ah, no, it's a, it's in a month or two, something like that. Yes, because so with that, the... because we lag 12 weeks, um, I think, then, and because we still test on it, then I think we're fine. I see Aurel has his hand up, so maybe he's got a better response than I do. I don't have a better response, but I do have a question with your permission. Um, regarding what you've just said, is it written down in an official covert uh, documentation somewhere? Um, I it's, it's not that link. It is in Qubit, Qubit. And my fear is that it'll take me a really long time to navigate there with my internet. I'm pretty sure it's in Docs. And I think it's under release. Uh, is that what you're after? My question is regarding the Kubernetes versions that are end of life. All the part regarding not supporting or supporting based on volunteering effort. All of this part, is it written in this document? All right. Um... In case you can't read it, while the Kubernetes community cannot provide this support, patches to support other releases will be considered as long as they are provided in a reasonable manner. Um, oh, that's kind of. Maybe we should consider writing it more explicitly in order to yeah, avoid these kinds of cases in the future. Uh, it might also be nice just to kind of put that same blurb on the user guide because it's the first page that comes up, right? Just have it right on the area where it says getting help. Um, Larry, do you mind sharing a link so I can bring it up? Absolutely. Here, let me drop it over to you. I'll click in the chat. So usually when you, I, I dropped it over there, and usually when you access, like when you just Google Kubevert, right? Kubevert website takes you to Kubevert IO, <clears throat> and it usually takes you to the user guide, and there's a section on that main page uh, where it says getting help, and it might be good to just kind of put that same blurb of like, hey, we're, we will do a best effort for these things, and maybe even just have that same table there. It's like right underneath that, right? Oh, yeah. Great idea. So. Could you do me a big favor and raise a bug that says that? I sure can. Thank you. Oh, oh ping me in Slack. Um, just so I don't forget after this meeting. <laughs> no worries. I, I'm happy to try after. I'm, I'm currently holding my daughter, so... <laughs> 
I, I have one hand, so I might, I might wait until after the call. Cool. Excellent. Let me go back to. So I think we still have one bug that I opened. So if I recall correctly, this was um, opened on the Argo CD side of things. Uh, when deploying a virtual machine on Argo CD, the vert launcher pod says, remains in status progressing forever. Uh, yeah, and this looks like where they came across it. The yeah, Argo CD side of things. Um, their versions look good. So I'm not entirely sure how Argo CD um, starts up VMs in for Qubit. So who would be a good person to CC onto this to have a look at this? Um, Andrew, you can CC me. Um, I might not be able to solve it, but my team do Argo CD stuff. So happy to advise on that. Dimitraka? Awesome. I think DMAJ. No, uh, you're not in my quick. All right. So D M A J R E K A R R E K A R R E E for Echo. Oh. We'll see if that works. Cool. Thank you very much. And it looks as though someone snuck in an extra bug at the bottom here. Was that anyone here? Or was it me? Either way, it is here. It is two weeks. So hot blood volume and cannot be created. Uh, it's 0.58, so it's an old version of Qubit. That's a shame. In which case, I can respond to that. I copy it over here. Which I believe brings us to the end of our agenda. It was not a short meeting at all, after all. Now, let me just see if anyone has added anything and they have not. Um, in which case, I'll leave uh, a couple of seconds here in case anyone has anything they'd like to throw in at the very end. Um, any questions or like comments? To, I'd like to jump in if that's all right, Andrew. Uh, so few things. Uh, first meeting since uh, KubeCon, and I want to say very public thank you to Alice for spending time with me and the Datapool team and helping out. Really massively helpful. So thank you for that. Second one, happy to sponsor the event, Andrew, so we can get Sivo on there. I guess reach out to me and we will sort all of that out. Um, third one, back to Alice, I'm afraid is we talked about storage migration um, and potentially that being on track for summer. I'm just wondering if that is still in progress. Uh, hi, Dinesh. Um, yeah, I really hope we, we can get it for the next uh, future freeze. So that will be mid of June. So 1.4? Yeah. Or 1.4, okay. A 1.3 or 4, I forgot. Uh, 1.3 is next. Yeah, so I hope uh, for that one we, so there is there is a PR, there, there was a couple of fix uh, that got merged this week. There is one that I hope CI will be green today and then there is the big PR, but really, I, I really think and hope we can get it in uh, for, uh, for June. 
That's amazing. Thank you very much. Thank you. Now I must remember to bring you on Slack. Well, uh, it is 12 minutes to the hour. So uh, thank you, everyone, for a very comprehensive uh, Cuba community meeting this week. Um, hope to see you next week. And until then, hope you all have a wonderful day and weekend. Goodbye. Thank you. Thanks. You too. Thank you. Thank you.